If you are trying to flip houses in Minneapolis, 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 that's a tongue twister. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Anyway, if you're trying to flip houses in Minneapolis, you're probably dealing with an inventory crunch. Am I right? Right? There's not enough inventory out there, and the inventory that is out there feels overpriced, right? Flippers, not just in Minneapolis, right? It's not just the folks out there in Minnesota that are dealing with this. People are dealing with this all over the world, right? There is just a shortage of houses to flip in America these days. But don't worry! Because I find the flips for you. I find the markets where the flips are, and then my team handles the -the on-the-ground work. And today, I am helping a guy from Minneapolis get himself a flip, folks. Let's jump into the business. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys, put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. My name is James Wise, and today, as mentioned, I am working with a flipper from Minneapolis, right? My man, Mark. Mark, you've come to me because I help people like you. I help investors all over the U.S., Invest in real estate, right? You're flipping. But flipping is just one little piece to the puzzle, right? It's just one tool in your investor toolbox, right? We could also do some long-term buy and holds, which I'm working on some of those for you as well, right? You're doing several deals with me, several deals with my team. So we got some long-term buy and hold deals in the works for you, but we also are going to be looking at some flips. And the flip I have for you today, I think you're really going to love. Now, You could flip a home in Minneapolis, of course, but what you're dealing with, Mark, is you're dealing with several things. One is an inventory shortage, okay? Your shortage on inventory is hurting you, right? Right. First of all, I have found markets where the properties are cheaper, just cheaper in general than in Minneapolis, right? So that's a big thing, right? A lot of flippers out there, you guys are trying to get going, trying to flip houses, and you think you got all everything you need. You think you got what it takes to get it done, make some money, but you don't have enough money to buy the house, right? So instead of saving endlessly, let's find markets where the houses are a little cheaper. Today, the property I'm thinking about targeting, ARV two and a quarter, acquisition costs only going to be about 126 to buy it, right? Imagine finding something that cheap in uh, Minneapolis, right? It's pretty hard to do, okay? And it's in a nice, solid, stable neighborhood, community pool, the whole nine. We'll go over that stuff later, though, right? So that's one issue, right? The pricing. The other issue, though, is just like the margins, man. Where are the margins? It's really hard. And even beyond that, part of getting your margins is to get reasonable contractors. Folks, not only do we have a housing shortage in 2021, we also got a labor shortage. It is so hard to find contractors. So I put all the pieces of the pie together for you, Mark. I will renovate the house. I will give you the ARV. I will come up with the scope of work. I have found a little old lady seller. I have got it all laid out. I'm going to go over every dollar in, every dollar out for you right after this. There are two sides to wholesaling. Bodacious marketing to attract motivated sellers and data-driven analytics. Together, they're a match made in heaven. This is our wholesaling course. Let the light get by the doors! Welcome back. Let's pull up the property. This, this is like a little old lady flip, okay? These are the kind of flips I really love. I love flips like this, right? It's like a house built like 60s, 70s, somewhere in there, and it doesn't have a bunch of structural issues, okay? I really don't like folks jumping into, you know, early flips and getting involved in structural issues and things of that nature, right? Like, Replacing roofs, like, okay, whatever. But getting into homes, like 100-year-old homes, where you have to replace the foundation. Have I done it? Yes. Can my team do it? Yes. Does Holton Wise know how to do an entire foundation? Yeah, we've built houses. We've done it all. But that is really not what you want to get into, folks. What you really want to jump into when you're just learning, just getting started, is cosmetic flips, right? Easy in, easy out. And this particular one is going to do that, right? It's a nice home. It's quote-unquote got good bones. But if you look at it, what does this look like, right? 
some cute little old lady baking cookies for Christmas lived here for like 50, 60 years and hasn't changed the, the green carpet or any of the decor since then. This is what we want, right? First time home buyers, new home buyers in the market, right? They see this home and they are not excited, right? Nobody wants to buy this. This is where us as flippers jump in, right? This is all easy stuff, right? This kitchen it doesn't look good. It's not appealing to people buying homes today, but you know what? It's not tough. There's not water damage. We got to pop everything out, swap in new stuff. It's simple, right? Paint, carpet. These are the flips we want to aim for. Now, after you're in the game for a long time and you're doing deal after deal after deal, right? You got a couple hundred deals under your belt maybe you want to start getting into some crazy stuff right but not right now folks i don't think it makes sense so this is the property that i like right in good shape solid bones but it needs cosmetic love also it's part of an hoa okay so the people that buy this house they're going to get to use that pool it's a private little community pool this is a very very nice place they'll be part of the bluegrass hoa now as far as the property numbers go okay we're going to be targeting targeting a price point of 225k all right 225k now we're going to need to do about $42,000 of renos, right? Getting rid of the 1970s, 1960s grandma look is going to cost us about $42,000. let us jump to the next chart, jump into exactly what that looks like, right? We're going to be spending about six on painting and patching the walls, right? Probably not a lot of holes here, so mostly just paint, right? We're going to go for modern decor, right? We're going to be looking for like an agreeable gray, okay? As far as the floors, those green <laughs> carpets aren't going to fly. We're going to pull that carpet up. If there is hardwoods, we will finish those. If there's not, we will lay down new carpet where appropriate or possibly a vinyl floor. If I'm doing like rentals, it'd definitely be a vinyl floor, but we could go with some nice uh, neutral carpet for our flips, except in the bathrooms, two bathrooms in the kitchen, that will be a vinyl product, a new modern vinyl product. All told, we're going to be dropping about 15 in the kitchen. New not like super insanely high end, but stainless steel package, right? Appliance package in the kitchen, new counters, uh, new Home Depot Lowe's quality cabinets, right? Two bathrooms. One we're gonna spend ten. One we're gonna spend five. One we're gonna do a nice little custom shower. The other one we're just gonna do a one piecer, right? So all told, that's about forty two. If stuff gets crazy, goes over budget, could be as high as fifty, but. That's why I like these flips, easy, simple cosmetic flips. There's not too much variance uh, in your budget. Now, don't get me wrong, though. We are dealing with 2022 post-COVID world. In the building, construction trades industry, things are going up, things are going down. You do see uh, a lot of creep, right? Like we get a lot of our supplies and stuff. Our paint comes directly from Sherwin-Williams, and sometimes their prices are going up just the way the economy is right now. So uh, you do have a variance there, but I think we should be able to knock this out for 42 and then when we sell it at two and a quarter you subtract out your commissions and whatnot you're looking at a gross profit of 38 2050 now as far as the neighborhood nice quality c-grade neighborhood and when you do flips folks when you do flips what's incredibly important the most important thing is to understand your true arv don't screw up the arv you screw up the arv you fuck the pooch you're done man you can't do that right so what i have for you is a nice comp right I already went through the repairs. We know how all that's going to work. My team can handle all those. You don't have to worry about hiring a painter or a plumber or this or that. Holton Wise does it all, and it should come in at about 42 k right? As far as getting that 225 price point, we should justify that. So let's justify it with this property, right? Very close. Sold for 211000 as I make this video. It sold like two weeks ago. Very similar, okay? And look. It is more updated, but not perfectly updated, right? It's still got some dated look to it, okay? This is, like, in the middle. It's not an old lady house, but it's like, you know, whoever lived here, they updated some things, but not everything, right? So when we provide a 
beautiful, pure, unique, uniformed, turnkey-looking house. We don't have gold on our shower with some, like, old-school-looking this or that. We should definitely come in at a higher price point than this one, right? Like, look at this floor, right? This doesn't cut it. This isn't what, what people want, right? Every room in this house has a different color on the walls. They got ugly old blinds. So ours will definitely be nicer. So if they can get 211 for this, I see no scenario where our house will not get to in a quarter, right? So with all that said, back to the original chart, right? With all of our costs, our ARV, the most you can pay as a buyer for this is 126750 if you're hoping to make 38250 right? Now, that's also following in line things like the 75% rule. That means your acquisition cost is going to be your ARV, 75% of your ARV minus your repairs. But here's the deal, folks. That's a 38K spread, right? If you got to pay 136 Okay, you don't make 38K, you make 28K. It's a pretty friggin' nice payday when you don't really have to do much, right? So it's up to you, right? 38K would be the target profit at 126. You can make almost 20K if you pay 146, right? We have found a motivated seller because it's a little old granny home, right? It looks to be an estate sale, things like that. So there's not going to be a million people uh, that are just first time homebuyers jumping after it. But that's the name of the game of flips, folks. You have to throw a lot out there, okay? It is a numbers game. When you're flipping houses, when you're doing wholesale deals, you are constantly putting out offers, meeting sellers, right? Not every offer is going to get accepted. That's what you have to understand, right? A lot of people would like a $30,000, $40,000 payday, right? So part of the job as a home flipper is to do what I've just done for you. I've done the hard work. I've found a house with a motivated seller. I have provided the renovation scope of work. I can get the renovation scope of work done, and I know the ARV like the back of my hand, right? The only missing piece of that equation is getting enough out there, enough offers out there to actually get these deals done. So that's what we need to do now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.